So this is Matho 310, May the 1st. This is the last lecture of the semester. And so uh, let's go ahead and get started. I have some announcements to start the day off with. First of all, web assigned homework. You have one last web assigned homework. That is on section 2.7 on absolute value. And you have until May the 8th, you have until the day after the final exam is due uh, to, to finish up that web assigned homework. So you have one last assignment. Remember, I do uh, drop the lowest four web assigned grades. So at the end of the semester, we'll go through there. And certainly, if you have a zero or two, those get dropped right away. And then, the, the, just in general, the four lowest uh, web assigned grades get dropped off at the end. That is also, remember, 20% of your final average at the end of the semester. So it is significant. Um, all right, the final exam. Some information about the final exam. So and I was just talking to people who are with me live today. First of all, there's a help session for the final exam. And that's, remember, online in my WebEx office. So just the same place as you go to live lecture. And that will be on Thursday of this week from 8 to 9.30 p.m. Uh, other times by appointment. So I will meet you outside of those hours. You just need to send me a remind message or an email, and we'll see if we can come up with a mutually agreeable time. And I have no problems doing that. I've already set up an appointment with one student um, for in one of my classes for Friday morning. So, um, you know, so don't hesitate to do that. All right. Uh, let's see. And then you remember that there's a review on my web page or on the Google site for the final exam. Uh, that's a departmental review and the final exam is also a departmental final exam. But the, the, the test will look very similar to everything you've done this semester. Very similar kind of format. Um, show all your work. There's no uh, no a multiple choice or anything like that. And then finally, the window for taking the final exam is May the 3rd through May the 7th. And so let me point out that May the 3rd is Thursday of this week. May the 7th is Monday of next week. All of your other exam windows have shut down on a Tuesday, but this is so that I can have time to get the exams back and graded. Uh, this window shuts down on Monday. So you have through Monday, May the 7th to take the test. All right, uh, today, our last topic of the semester. So uh, we will be looking at absolute value inequalities. Uh, we talked about absolute value equations in the last lecture. Today we're going to do absolute value inequalities, and I'm going to go back and look at equations also because it, because it kind of all fits together. So let's go ahead and get started. Please, if you're with me live here, don't hesitate to shout out and stop me if you've got a question about something. All right, so, uh, so from last time, Uh, we talked about absolute value equations last time. So we looked at equations that had an absolute value expression in them. right? And so we saw that if you had the absolute value of um, Bob is equal to K, and if K was positive, Right? In other words, k, and I say positive, but technically greater than or equal to zero. Then the way to solve this, there were two ways that this could be true, remember, that Bob could be equal to negative k or Bob could be equal to positive k. Because remember, there are two numbers that have an absolute value of k. It's both positive k and negative k. Right? Um, and so... Um,
All right, um, and uh, Taylor, do me a favor and ask that question at the very end of the lecture, okay? That way we can, I'll, I'll answer it for everybody, all right? So if you'll do that for me and ask me that question at the very end of class today. All right, so we have, um, so we have that if, if uh, you've got um, the absolute value of expression equals a positive constant, that there's two ways that that could be true. And if you had the absolute value of something equals a constant and k is negative, so k is less than zero, then there's no solution to this type of equation. All right, so uh, as an example, so we have, if you have the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 6, then uh, that's a positive constant there, the 6, right? And so based on what we talked about up above, there's two ways that this could be true, and that is if 2x minus 3 was equal to negative 6 or if 2x minus 3 was equal to positive 6. So that's what you do. You write down those two equations. So be really uh, pay attention here that the absolute value, when you have an absolute value and you rewrite it without absolute value, you have to rewrite it as two equations because there are two ways it could be true, right? And so you, it always breaks down into two equations. In fact, let me um, let me kind of move this over here a little bit so it's sitting right above like that. So when you have an absolute value equation like this, notice that it, it splits up basically into two different equations. One where you have a positive constant and one where you have a negative constant like that. Right? So uh, you have to write out two equations there. And then all you do at the end there is you just solve both of those equations. Right? So you just get 2x equals negative 3 or x equals negative 3 halves. And here you get 2x equals 9 or x equals 9 halves. So you end up with two solutions, negative 3 halves and 9 halves. All right, so that's one, one thing to talk about. And then um, if you have a negative number like that, the absolute value of 3x plus 5 equals negative 8, if it's a negative number, an absolute value must be positive, right? Absolute value uh, must be positive. And so there is no way that it can be equal to a negative number, right? Can't be equal to a negative number. So it can't be equal to a negative number. And so when you see an equation like that, you stop right away. And you just say there's no solution to that equation. All right? Don't have to do anything there. You just say it's no solution. And then uh, finally, one last example for absolute value equations to go back over what we talked about last week. Or, yeah, last week. Uh, if you have uh, negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 4, uh, minus 10 is equal to negative 16, something like that. You have to first get the absolute value by itself. Uh, so get absolute value by itself before you break up into equations like that. So you have to add 10 to both sides, so I get negative 6 on the right side there, and then divide by negative 3. And, and now you can break this up into two separate equations, right? So then you've got that x plus 4 could be equal to negative 2, and it'd be true, or x plus 4 could be equal to positive 2, and it would be true. And then just solve each of those equations. So you get x equals negative 6 or x equals negative 2. And those are my, the solutions to my equation like that. All right. So that's, that's a quickie review of absolute value equations. So now let's go on to talking about absolute value inequalities. So absolute value inequalities.
So that means we don't have an equal sign, we have an order symbol of some type. So as an example, we're going to start off with some simple examples here. So if you have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3, absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3, this would be a typical example of a simple absolute value inequality. Remember that absolute value represents the distance from 0 on the number line, and so you're saying what numbers have a distance from 0 that is less than or equal to 3? Less than or equal to 3. So there's 0 on the number line. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 on the, on the number line here. You're looking for numbers whose distance from 0 is 3 or less. Well, and so, you know, what can be true here? You can be on either side of zero. And so the numbers that are within, so it's numbers that are within uh, three units of zero. Well, those numbers are the numbers from negative three to positive 3, all these numbers right here, and then all the numbers in between, too. Uh, and so this is what it looks like on a number line, is this interval like this. And it's everything between negative 3 and 3. As a, uh, so that's what it looks like on a number line. As an inequality, that would be negative 3 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3, like that. And then in interval notation, it would just look like this from negative 3 to 3 with brackets around the negative 3 and the 3. All right, so this, is, this gives us a way of, if you, if you look at this problem, this is going to be true whether it's 3 or 5 or 1, right? It's always, since it's distance from 0, it's always going to be this interval inside these two numbers, one a positive and one a negative. And so what we have here is this idea that if you have the absolute value of Bob is less than or equal to a constant k, less than or equal to a constant k, and k is positive or zero, and so we'd say k greater than or equal to zero, right, that on a number line, this will always be, where, where will Bob be? Well, Bob will always be between negative k and k, just like in the last problem where it was between negative 3 and 3. And so Bob, whatever the expression Bob is, must always be in between negative k and k like that. All right, and so as an inequality, that would be negative k less than or equal to Bob, which is less than or equal to k. And so this is, this is the deal here, is that uh, an expression that's in this form, an inequality that's in this form, can always be rewritten as an inequality, as a compound inequality like that. That, Bob, that means automatically that Bob's got to be between negative k and k. All right, and let's go ahead and state this now before we look at examples. If you have the absolute value of Bob less than or equal to k, but k is negative, well, remember, um, so k is less than 0. Remember that uh, absolute value must be positive. So you can never have a positive number be less than a negative number. Can you have a positive be less than or equal to a negative? And the answer is, could, could that ever be true? And the answer is no. And so uh, there is no solution in, in this particular situation. Right? When you have the absolute value of some expression less than or equal to a negative, right away you write no solution. All right, uh, and so let's, with those, kind, those patterns in mind here, let's look at some examples. And then these are for less thans now. We're going to look at greater thans in a minute. So let's say we have um, 
the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 10. Well, so the bob, bob is just x in this case. And so what we have here on a number line is negative 10 and 10. You automatically put negative 10 and 10 there. And bob, which in this case is x, must be between negative 10 and 10. And so this, you get the solution right away when you write this out. You just get that x has got to be between negative 10 and 10. And then uh, in, in interval notation, this would be bracket negative 10 to 10, close the brackets. On a number line, if you were going to draw this out on a number line, you'd have negative 10 and 10 like that. And let's see, you would put a filled in dot on negative 10 and 10, and you'd shade everything in between. It's always an interval like that. All right, so that's a that's about that's as a simple a situation as you can get. Now the thing is that Bob, the expression inside the absolute values, could be a little bit more complicated than just an x. So let's look at some examples where it's a little bit more complicated than just an x and see how that uh, changes things or what it what it does. So let's say we have the absolute value of x plus two is less than, let's just say less than uh, 6. It's not even less than or equal to here, it's just less than. Now the less than or less than or equal to doesn't change how you do the problem. Um, in this case, on our number line, you're looking at all the numbers that are within 6 units of 0 in the number line, so it's got to be everything between negative 6 and 6. But what's Bob in this case? What's the expression that we're talking about? Well, it's x plus 2. So you're saying that x plus 2 has got to be between negative 6 and 6. And so as an inequality, as a compound inequality, this is what you'd write. Right? We take this absolute value inequality and we rewrite it as that compound inequality, that those mean the same thing. You have to do that first, write it out as a compound inequality, and then you can solve it. All you do here is just subtract 2 from all three parts and you get negative 8 less than x, which is less than 4. And there you got it. You've got the solution set to the inequality. On a number line, um, you have, here's negative 8 and 4. And it's all the numbers between those two, but not equal to. So you have open circles around negative 8 and 4. And then it's everything between negative 8 and 4. Um, in interval notation, this would be... Uh, everything between negative 8 and 4. Um, so it would be uh, an open set of parentheses, negative 8 to 4, and then close the parentheses. So there's uh, the next problem right there. So, uh, so Again, if you have an absolute value inequal inequality that's a less than, you automatically write it out as a compound inequality like I just did right there. All right, next example. Let's look at something maybe a little bit more involved. Let's say we have the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is less than or equal to uh, 10. All right. So uh, the Bob expression, the expression that's inside the absolute values, is a little bit more complicated. But uh, what I always do at the, uh, out to the side here is I kind of draw out a number line. So it, that will help me write out the inequality, the compound inequality. In this case, Bob has got to be between three, negative 10 and 10. So Bob has got to be... Uh, like this in the number line. Bob, in this case, is 3x minus 5, so 3x minus 5 has got to be between negative 10 and 10. So you have negative 10 less than or equal to 3x minus 5, which is less than or equal to 10, like that. All right, and then you just go ahead and solve the inequality once you've written it out as a compound inequality. This is the critical first step right here, writing it out as a compound inequality. All right, and then you add 5. Uh, now just solve this. So add 5, you get negative 5 less than or equal to 3x, which is less than or equal to 15. Divide by 3, you get negative 5 thirds less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. 
And that is the solution to your inequality. Right on a number line, you'd have negative 5 thirds here and 5 here. And it would be everything between negative 5 thirds and 5 uh, filled in dots in this case because everything's less than or equal to. Like that. So that's how it would look on a number line. And then finally, uh, as a uh, in, in interval notation, this would be everything from negative 5 thirds to 5 brackets around both, like that. Those would be the solutions. All, you're saying that all the numbers between negative 5 thirds and 5 are solutions to that inequality. And any number that's not in that interval is not a solution. You could always check this you know, uh, on all of these problems. You know, like it, at the at the top here on the, the original problem on this screen, you have the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 6. What you could do is you could identify a number in each of these regions on the graph. So like here's negative 10 right here in red. And it's not shaded. So this should, this should make it false. Right? Because negative 10 should not be a solution. And then you pick a number between uh, like 2. So 2 should make it true because it is shaded. And then over here, maybe 5 should make it false again because 5 is not shaded. So you could actually check those, and that would give you a really good idea that you are actually right in this, in this problem. So uh, when we check, you can check x equals negative 10. And so you have the absolute value of negative 10 plus 2 is less than 6. The absolute value of negative 8 is less than 6, and you get 8 less than 6, which is false, right? So negative 10 is not a solution to this inequality. Uh, you could check uh, x equals 2. So the absolute value of 2 plus 2 is less than 6. So that's just the absolute value of 4 less than 6, or 4 less than 6, and that's true. And that was what's supposed to happen, right? Uh, 2 is supposed to be a solution to this inequality. And then finally, you could check uh, x equals 5. That's the other one I picked there. And when you check x equals 5, you have the absolute value of 5 plus 2 less than 6, absolute value of 7 less than 6, which is 7 less than 6, which is definitely false. Right? And so notice uh, it works out really well here. Um, and so that's never a bad thing to do at the end. If you have time, check, pick numbers off of the number line uh, in both the shaded region and in the unshaded region and make sure that they actually do what they're supposed to do, whether they are actually solutions or not solutions to the inequality. All right, uh, the uh, next problem I want to look at, um, and so this will be, we have two more less thans. Remember, we're still doing less thans right here. So let's say we have 2 uh, times the absolute value of uh, x minus 6 minus 8 is less than uh, 10. All right? So remember, just like equations, the first thing you must do is get the absolute value by itself. So you isolate. Uh, the absolute value first. So that means in this problem, I add 8 and I divide by 2 and get the absolute value by itself, and then I can solve the inequality. Right? Uh, this is the absolute value less than a, a constant, a positive constant, so I put negative 9 and 9 on the number line. Bob must be between those two, so x minus 6 has got to be between them. So as a compound inequality, this is what you get. Negative 9 less than x minus 6, which is less than 9. These are equivalent. These are mean the same thing. And then add 6, so you get a negative, uh, negative, six, negative 3, I'm sorry, negative 3 less than x, which is less than 15. And that would be the solution uh, to your inequality right there. All, right, all the x values between negative uh, 3 and 15. So on a number line, here's negative 3 and here's 15. Uh, we would go ahead and put open circles here because it's strictly less than, and it would be all the numbers between them.
And then in interval notation, this would be everything from negative 3 to 15, but not including negative 3 and 15, so we include those in, uh, in parentheses. All right, and then our last problem with uh, less than statements, if we had the absolute value of 3x minus 7 is less than or equal to negative 12, right? When you see a negative constant right here, right, there is nothing to do in this problem right here. Absolute values cannot be less than negative numbers, and so you write no solution automatically. All right, uh, and then finally, the last thing we want to talk about today are greater than statements. So greater than statements. So with greater thans, you're talking about something like this. The absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 2. And so now you're, you're talking about the numbers that are two or more units from zero. Numbers that are two or more units from zero. And so on a number line, what you would have, you know, uh, label some of the numbers here real quick. <clears throat> numbers that are two or more units from zero on the number line would be all the numbers away from zero. And so if you were graphing these, you'd be talking about 2 and 3 and 4 on the positive side, and negative 2 and negative 3 and negative 4 and so on on the negative side, and all the numbers in between. So you'd have two pieces here. You'd have numbers out there greater than or equal to 2, and numbers out here less than or equal to negative 2. And so as a uh, compound inequality, this is a really different kind than the less thans. What you have is you still break it down into two inequalities, but this is an or statement. You get, you get two pieces, distinct pieces, and you get x less than or equal to negative 2 or x greater than or equal to 2, like that. And so uh, then generally, if you're going to look at this in a more general way, if you have the absolute value of Bob, bigger than or equal to a constant, and that constant is positive or zero. So I write positive here, but I'm going to put k greater than or equal to zero. Then where is Bob going to be in this case? Well, you still, just like with less than, you put negative k and k on the number line. But in this case, uh, instead of Bob being between negative k and k, Bob is on the outside, so Bob is either out here or Bob is out here. Bob could be in two different places here. So Bob is either Bob is either uh, less than or equal to negative k or Bob is greater than or equal to positive k. And so we're going to look at some examples of that in a minute, but it's, this is outside of negative k and k instead of inside. All right, so now uh, let's see. Um, if the absolute value of Bob is greater than or equal to k, but k is negative, now this may be unexpected here. So in other words, k is less than 0. Well, don't forget that... Um, Absolute values are positive numbers, so this is a positive number here. And this is, k would be negative in this case. And when is a positive number greater than or equal to a negative number? Well, that would, in fact, always be true. So this is really different. This is always true. And so in this case, if you have a negative number um, sitting out there, that constant, the solution is going to be all reals. Everything is a solution. Completely the opposite of uh, when, if you had a less than statement. And by the way, we're going to summarize all this with problems kind of sitting right next to each other at the very end of this, so you kind of see how this is all working out. Uh, you can kind of compare things here. All right, so uh, let's say we have the absolute value of x 
minus three is greater than or equal to five. The absolute value of x minus three is greater than or equal to five. So on a number line, you know, you're talking about absolute value. So you're talking about all the numbers that are further than five units from zero. So Bob could be in two separate places here. Bob could be over here, less than negative five, or Bob could be over here and be greater than positive five. What's Bob in this case? And I really shouldn't put uh, Bob there, maybe, but uh, what is Bob in this case? It's x minus 3. So as a compound inequality, what do we have? That x minus 3 has to be less than or equal to negative 5, or uh, x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to positive 5, like that. All right, and then you just solve each inequality. You get x less than or equal to negative 2. You add 3 there. You add 3 over here. You get x greater than or equal to 8. So you have all the solutions, uh, all the x values that are less than or equal to negative 2 and greater than or equal to 8. So uh, it would be all these numbers over here and all of these numbers over here. In integral notation, you actually have to write this out in two separate pieces. You have to write negative infinity to negative 2, close the brackets there, and then you put a union, remember, when you have two pieces like this, and then 8 to infinity like that. All right, uh, let's look at another example. We're kind of briskly working through these. Uh, so let's say we have the absolute value of 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to, uh, let's say, 11. All right, so this is another greater than statement. So you put negative 11 and 11 on a number line, right? And uh, Bob, which in this case is 3x minus 1, is either got to be, because it's a greater than, it's either got to be over here less than a negative 11 or over here greater than positive 11 like that. And so then you can write it out as an inequality. You get 3x minus 1 as a compound inequality. 3x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 11 or 3x minus 11 is greater than, whoops, I'm sorry, 3x minus 1, writing too many 1's there, 3x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 11, that's better. Or 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to positive 11. And then you just solve each of those inequalities. So you go ahead and add 1, so you have 3x less than or equal to negative 10, x less than or equal to negative 10 thirds on that one. And in this one, you get 3x is greater than or equal to 12, or x greater than or equal to 4. So on a number line, always draw this out on a number line at the end. Here's negative 10 thirds, and here's 4. And so you're talking about all the numbers less than or equal to uh, negative 10 thirds and greater than or equal to 4. Like that. All right, uh, and so I think at this point, so so uh, let's go ahead and write some uh, statements out, uh, kind of side by side here, on absolute value. So let's look at equations, and then uh, less than's and greater than's right next to each other here, so you can kind of compare them. All right, so let's say we have the absolute value of x minus 2 equals uh, 6 right there. And then you have the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than or equal to 6. And then you have x, the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 6. All right, so um, on a number line, 
uh, for the equation, all you're doing is looking at negative 6 and 6, and that's it. Right? There's no intervals involved with an equation. You're just talking about these two specific numbers. And x minus 2 is either going to be equal to negative 6 or it's going to be equal to positive 6, and that's it. Right? So that's what you write out. x minus 2 is equal to negative 6 or x minus 2 is equal to positive 6. And then you solve each of those equations. So you get x equals negative 4 or x is equal to 8. No interval notation or anything like that. No number line at the end. You're just finding solutions to an equation. There's no intervals involved at all. So it's just negative 4 and 8. The less than, what do we know here? You still put negative 6 and 6 down. But now x minus 2, where could x minus 2 be in this situation? x minus 2 could be anything in between uh, negative 6 and 6. See, so now you are writing out an inequality, and uh, you're getting intervals here. So you get x minus 2 has got to be between negative 6 and 6. And then you solve each of those, uh, or this compound inequality, you add 2. Here and you get negative 4 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8. Here you do use a number line at the end, right? You put negative 4 and 8 down, and then you uh, solve that inequality um, or draw that inequality out. So everything between negative 4 and 8, like that. You would use interval notation at the end. This would be bracket negative 4 to 8, close the brackets, like that. All right, and then finally, uh, greater thans. Notice you still do the same thing at the beginning. You put down negative 6 and 6. But now where is uh, Bob in this uh, context? You know, Bob is going to be out over here. Uh, so that would be x minus 2. Or Bob is going to be out over here. And that's where x minus 2 is going to be. So you get x minus 2 less than or equal to negative 6, or x minus 2 is greater than or equal to positive 6. And then you solve each of those inequalities. So you get x less than or equal to... Um, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm adding 2 to both sides. So x less than or equal to negative 4, sorry or add to, you get x greater than or equal to 8. So on a number line here, you have negative 4 and 8, but now it's everything on the outside of those numbers. So you're talking about these numbers being solutions or these numbers being solutions like this. All right, and so uh, in interval notation here, you'd have negative infinity to negative 4. Oops, let me back off there on the color. So you'd have negative infinity to negative 4. Close the brackets. Always put a parenthesis, remember, around the infinity. And then 8 to infinity there. And um, so you have all the numbers smaller than negative 4. All the numbers bigger than or equal to 8, like that. All right, so that's a good comparison of the uh, two. Now, if the number is negative, uh, and so there's not as nearly as much to do here. See, if you have the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to negative 6, there's no solution. Right? Absolute value can't be equal to a negative number. If you have the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than or equal to negative 6, still no solution. Absolute value cannot be less than a negative number. And then finally, if you have the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 6, that's different, right? That's an uh, absolute value, a positive number, bigger than a negative number, and that's always true. And so this solution is all real. It's negative infinity to, to infinity, right? This is never true right here, and this is never true right here. All right, so, uh, so hopefully this page will kind of help you kind of keep things straight as far as absolute values go and uh, how you 
how you decide what to do when you have an equation, a less than or a greater than. That's the important thing uh, at the beginning is to rewrite the statement without absolute values. And so I've got each one of them written down right here, how you rewrite each one of them without absolute values. And you need to do that in order to be able to actually uh, solve the inequality. All right, so that's it. That's, uh, that's our lecture for the day. So uh, uh, please um, let me know if you have any questions. Those of you who are with me live, do you have any questions at all? All right, well, um, so for everybody, those of you who are with me live, those of you who are um, watching this recorded later, hopefully there's some of you watching this recorded later, don't forget, and I will send you a remind message out about this to remind you about it, but remember you have a help session on Thursday uh, for the final exam. It's a help session, uh, final exam, and that's Thursday. Uh, May the 3rd from 8 to 9.30 p.m. And that's on my WebEx page in my WebEx office. Uh, don't forget that the final exam itself uh, runs from May the 3rd through May the 7th. You have those days to take the test. So good luck, is not just with my final exam, but good luck with final exams in general. Please don't, get, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. If you have questions about anything or if you want to try to set up an appointment in the WebEx office outside of that help session, I'll be happy to try to figure out a time where we can get together. All right. So you guys all uh, who are with me live today, you've been my regulars. Thank you very much for being with me. Uh, 